Hey, everyone. Welcome to this special CUBE series, Women of the Cloud, presented by AWS. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. This is a special segment. This is about strong mothers, leaders, and change makers. I've got two great guests here with me to talk through some great things about their career and some advice for you. Please welcome Trish Tate, the head of retail, CPG, travel, and hospitality for West Enterprise at AWS. And Susanna Dyer is here as well, Head of Global Alliances at Trend Micro. Ladies, it's so great to have you on the Women of the Cloud series. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. Oh, my pleasure. Trish, let's go ahead and start with you. Give the audience just a little bit of a snapshot into your current role. Absolutely. So I lead a team who focuses on uh, retail, CPG, travel, and hospitality customers across the Southwest. Uh, All of our customers are enterprise and so every day we wake up thinking about what our customers are trying to do and what they're trying, their businesses are trying to accomplish, what problems they're trying to solve. And we work backwards from there to help them develop solutions that can really propel their business forward and enable them to achieve those outcomes. That AWS customer centricity always comes through in every conversation we have. Thanks for sharing, Trish. Susanna, give us a little bit of, of your background at Trend Micro and some of the yeah. things that you're working on. Yeah, Lisa, I've I've been working at Trend for almost nine years now. I lead our global alliances. And with that means all things AWS and Trend and some of our key partners, how we're working together around the world, doing great go-to-market strategies, co-selling and growing together as well as co-building together in, in innovative technology ways. Excellent. We're going to talk about some innovative technology trends and ideas from you guys later. But you guys are both not just women of the cloud. You're also moms. I won't bug you about how are you getting that work-life balance that seems to elude all of us. But I'd love to understand how being a mother has impacted your leadership style. Trish, we'll start with you. And then Susanna, we'll go to you. Sure, absolutely. And thanks for the question. So I have a six-month-old. So a lot of uncharted waters for me in uh, in my household. And, and uh, you know, it is a balance, right? So <laughs> balancing it all, making sure that I'm still showing up for my team, my customers, my company, uh, you know, of course, always doing the right thing. And I think what I've learned is, or what I joke about is that I've never taken a lunch um, probably in my whole career, but, you know, sometimes you got to block, block your calendar, uh, you know, because you, there's there's just things that you have to do, like feed your baby uh, when she's at this age. Uh, so it's been interesting uh, to, I think, overcome some of those things, learn some of those things. I think I'd be remiss if I didn't call out the fact that so many women that have come before me have really made the experience that I have as a mother in the workforce so much easier. So you go into pretty much any business today and there is a mother's room, uh, which, you know, enables you to have the privacy and the time and the support, uh, the relentless support that I had for my leadership team to make sure that I'm able to manage um, all the things that, uh, you know, come with being a, a new mom. It has just been incredible and um, overwhelmingly um you know, makes it easier, I guess, right at the end of the day. And I I think in terms of how it's changed my leadership style, I'll say that I'm probably not always known to be the most patient person, kind of like, let's get stuff done, right? There's a lot to do. And so I've learned to be more patient, I think. Uh, And along with that, I think more empathetic as well. Um, Understanding where other people are coming from is, of course, really important, not only so that you can relate to them, but so that you can empower them and build them up and motivate them and inspire them and enable them to be their best selves as a leader. Um, And then I think, you know, finally, at the same time, there's a lot less time. So I, I tell my team often, like, I care about you deeply and genuinely as a human, but at the same time, we have to get stuff done. So with that, I find that sometimes I'm probably a little bit more direct than I was in the past um, as a mother and, you know, with with more limited time than I did previously. Well, you look incredibly rested for having a six-month-old, my goodness, but such great impact that it's had on your leadership style. So Zena, talk to us a little bit about your role as a mother and how it's impacted your leadership style as well. Yeah. And I'm going to, Trish, I'm going to play off of what you were saying. I also have a six month old and a three year old. Um, and recently coming back from maternity uh, leave, it's, it's, it's definitely changed some things. I think time is the greatest gift we can give ourselves and to others. And I want to always respect my team's time and that, and that we're removing a lot of the fluff, right? We're being mindful of the time that we have, right? We're not having meetings just to have meetings. We're having purposeful time um, because the last thing I want to do is 
take away that time from other people being with their families or time where I need to be with my family. And I think that's the other kind of key thing is being purposeful, right? With the time that we have, we're focusing on the time, on the task that we have at the time that we're in it. If we're having a, a team meeting, we're in it, we're focused. We're not multitasking in that case. Also, when I am going home or if I'm like logging off, I'm going to log off from that six o'clock to the eight o'clock time. It's my family time. I need that. I'm completely turning off my phone or just leaving it to the side. And I'm taking that time and being purposeful with the moment that I'm in in order for my for me to say I'm being valuable, right, to my team and, and to my family, too. And that's so important to be able to, to deliver value on both sides and to feel yeah the value that you're delivering. Susanna, sticking with you, would you, I'm, I'm going to think that you're going to say yes to, but would you think that that motherhood has actually made you better at your job? And then Trish will go to you with the same question. hundred percent. I actually think, thought about this and I actually made, made me be more ambitious. I almost felt like now I have, I have someone actually watching me, right? I have, I have, I almost had this motherhood has awakened more ambition, which is, interesting, the stakes are higher, right? Like we can, I now am, have a, 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 you know, a little group of people that are looking at me to say, wow, you can do hard things. And I feel responsible to be able to say, I can do hard things. And so can you, I, it, that model of, 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 of showing my, my kids, what things are, what's possible is so inspiring to me more than anything else. I want to keep doing more. It's <laughs> it's almost the opposite. I love that. I love that yeah. it's really ignited your ambition. Trish, what 100%. about you? What are some of the ways that you would say being a mother has made me better at my job? Yeah. And I think similarly, I'll play off of Susanna there. Uh, you know, I, I tend to, I guess, like look at the world through her eyes. Right. And so being able to realize that there's, um, there's so much out there to be curious about and learn just constantly. Right. I think that it really helps, you know, differentiate me being open to all of that. And then also what you said about purposely, I think about how is everything that I'm doing very intentional, right? Working to achieve some kind of outcome, whether it's, you know, helping develop my employee to get them to the next level, helping to enable my customer to reduce costs or grow profits or increase revenues through different monetization engines. Um, and so, you know, I think combining those two, those two areas, it, it absolutely, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it makes me want to do better. Right. Um, as, as you called out so beautifully, you know, they're looking up to us and showing them how we are, we're able to achieve these great things and that they too can, uh, and, and do so, you know, with grace, not always, but, but a lot of the times, uh, as, uh, it's been, it's been really uh, eye opening and, um, honor. I think it's an honor, right. To, to be able to, to be a mother and then also to lead a team and, and support our customers in the way that we do. I love that. I think you both probably role models to many adults in your career, but now you're, you're feeling, it seems like you're feeling that role even so much more personally with your little ones who are watching. And Susan, as you said, I want them to see they can be anything that they, that they want to be. You know, there's this common misconception. We always talk about it with work-life balance, things like that, that women have to sacrifice ambition for, to have the flexibility that you you've carved out for yourselves. I'm going to, I'm going to guess Susanna, that, that your thoughts on that, or I, as you said, you're even more ambitious. What are your thoughts on when you hear that misconception that, well, I can't be ambitious because I have to be flexible to be with my family. Well, I think it's a really long, it's a very wrong way of wrong way of thinking. Um, I, I absolutely think motherhood makes you a more a uh, well-rounded person, more empathetic to Trisha's point. I think it allows you to see things in a different perspective. I think it makes you a better leader because you're able to connect with people in a different way. You're really have an attitude of this is my, my purpose and I'm doing things intentionally. Um, I absolutely think motherhood has made me be even more intentional with where I'm going to go with my career. And, and I, 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 people, you, you can't balance, you can't have it all. Sometimes some things go, you know, some things go up, some things go down, but that's okay. We can still, we can still have ambition and we can still be able to be great role, role models for our kids. 
Absolutely. Trish, what are your thoughts on that misconception that I mentioned? Because it sounds like both of you are really in in sync with each other. You talked about the how it's benefiting your leadership style. You're more patient. You've got more empathy. Great qualities of a leader. But when people yeah. say ambition or flexibility, you can't have both. What do you say? There's a few things that come to mind. And I, I'm, I'm actually kind of laughing a little bit because after I came back from maternity leave, probably a month in, I was having a conversation with a mentor and I was like, I'm not doing enough. I haven't you know, had these kinds of career development conversations with my leader. I need to be more direct about it. And what she said to me was, give yourself grace. So I think you said it again so beautifully, Susanna, where, you know, there, there's there's a right time, right? And, and of course, we can always, for me personally, I, I seek to broaden my impact. I want to always be close to the customers, but how can I broaden the impact that I'm having, you know, continuing to increase my you know, kind of the span of what I'm able to see and learn and and do right from a from an employee perspective and, and development wise. Uh, and, you know, what comes with that is gaining a lot of experience. Right. So I think that it was really great for um, this mentors, fantastic, uh, just a, a incredible human to remind myself to give myself grace that I, I kind of just came back. Right. And take, you know, take things as they come. So, you know, I mean, it's an it's an honor to be here today, just, you know, having the ability to speak about these things, because I think, um, you know, it's a it's a good reminder that while we're going through these new experiences. I'm still challenging myself in different ways. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, just being able to even, you know, juggle the, and, and work through or, or, you know, cruise through the uncharted waters that I'm, I'm achieving. It really is, uh, you know, me gaining new experiences there. So sometimes I think it's important to take a step back and realize that while it may not be directly in your face that you're, you know, seeking a new role or, you know, having a specific development conversation around the things that you want to do above and outside of your role, those, you know, take a step back and, and realize that you still are getting exposed to those different kinds of things. Um, and, you know, again, just give yourself grace, I think is important. And um, just because, you know, there may be a, a few months where you feel like you've, you've slowed down, if you will, right? But that's not necessarily probably the case, despite that that's how it feels. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're on a different track than you're originally were. Um, and you know, the sky's the limit. So, uh, let's go break those glass ceilings. I just, I, I just, love, I love that. Go ahead. this is uh, just reminded me someone in my team said to me today, uh, a young woman said before my male with my male leader, I, he felt, it always felt like his, his life was work. And I didn't know if I was going to ever be able to be a mom while working. And I feel so inspired that we can do it. And I, she said, you can do it all. And I said, I can't do it all. Sometimes, things that I, sometimes I fall on my, sometimes I feel overwhelmed and that's okay. That doesn't mean that we can't, you know, continue to, to try to do our best. There's going to be good days and bad days. We can still try to have it all right. That, that it's okay. Grant yourself some grace. It's, it is possible to do it. I love that. Just like the, the cloud, it's a journey, right? There's no blueprint for it per se. I'm sure. I imagine you both were, were going you know, hundred miles an hour and then maternity leave head and you're trying to kind of readjust to your feet. I love give yourself grace, be graceful with yourself, have that empathy for yourself as well, mm -hmm. because clearly you're making a huge impact on your teams and those around you. I'd love to understand a, a little bragging moment here for each of you. Trish, we'll go to you. Uh, what some of the wins that, that you and your team have had recently that you're really proud of? What are some of the things that come to mind? Yeah, absolutely. So I feel so lucky. I have such an incredible team, such incredible customers who are really looking to kind of innovate at that next level. Uh, so a lot of, you know, like you said, a lot of them are on different journeys, but I think everybody is looking at ways to embed artificial intelligence and machine learning into their, their current business applications uh, and, and modernize those applications. There's a consistent theme of doing more with less, I would say, across all of our customer base, especially with some of the economic headwinds and uncertainty that we're seeing. Uh, and I, what we're also seeing a lot of is around how are we changing customer care? So I work with a lot of travel and hospitality customers, and I'm sure if you've called into airlines, it's not always the best experience. <laughs> As an example, most recently we had a, an, an airline who was able to adopt 
one of our, our customer care solutions. Uh, it's called Amazon Connect. And they've been able to see such incredible changes to the way that they're able to serve their customers uh, through making that kind of modernization and going towards a platform that's more data-driven and, and really uh, enables the customer to have a better experience when calling into an airline, you know, when your flight get canceled and uh, it can already be pretty stressful and, you know, an anxiety type, you know, anxious type of moment, uh, you know, anything that we can do there to help the, the agents on the back end, you know, have the data and the tools. Uh, so that's what the Amazon Connect solution really can do, um, provide that better customer experience. Um, and then and then the other one, I would say kind of along that same lines in terms of hospitality customers and from uh, a guest experience Recently, personalization is a, a big thing that we see, right? Like how when I walk into a place, do they know who I am and what kind of drink I like? So uh, at, at some of our casino properties, we've been able to implement geolocation solutions whereby it does just that, enables the, the casino property to understand who I am as a customer of theirs. And when I walk in within a few minutes, we're able to deliver the drink that I ordered last time uh, without having to even have any interaction between the, the server and the um, the, the customer and uh, you know those kinds of things I think go a long way in terms of improving the overall experience you know when you're taking time out of the office the the more enjoyable that that time that you have away is uh can be really um important and and so I, I feel really proud that we're able to make those kinds of impacts with our customers and really just change the the experience all around Delivering great customer experience, also delivering that personalized experience that you were talking about are table stakes for, I think, every business in every industry. So I love that you're having, you know, the direct impact on that. Susanna, talk to us about some of the things that your team and you've recently won on that you're like, this is awesome. You know, I actually, it's very similar, right? Doing less with more. And what are we doing from a partnership perspective? So my job is all, all about uh, partnering with AWS and, and partnering our technologies, really. Like what is the best from ours to AWS to our customers? How do we make things better? Uh, we're about to, to launch a, a kind of a, a new technology that will be working with AWS and our and Trend Micro's product, delivering an easy button for a customer to be able to deploy the right the right uh, cloud formation templates and security at the same time. And more innovative is that we're actually working with one of our uh, system integrators, a, a, a service company uh, that is going to also be taking it to the next level where a customer is gonna be able to have the right AWS uh, technologies, so like services turned on to actually begin a mass migration the security behind it, so that's Trend Micro, and then the services from an SI. It's really had never been done before. It seems very simple, that easy button of having these trifecta, these three companies doing things um, together at the same time, integrated, um, helping customers to actually understand their journey and their, as they're migrating, that, that that platform, I think, is going to be really, really special. Uh, we're in the middle of this transition and and launching it internally here at Trend. Uh, couldn't be more excited about taking it to the next level. Let's actually get customers started in the integration with the technology behind it. I think it's going to be really awesome. And it's just going to be a flywheel of, of innovation, flywheel. I can tell. But yeah. what, what you're both doing is so impactful to so many different people, whether it's on the leadership side or the customer side. I'd love to wrap things up here in our conversation, kind of looking at, you know, your, your little ones as a future generation. What are some of the ways that you think about how we can continue to use technology to be innovative in ways that will positively impact those little ones and, and the future generation? Trish, we'll start with you. Awesome. Thanks for the question. Oh, this is this is such an important one. I think, you know, the buzzword these days is is what's happening with large language models or chat GPT is an implementation of a large language model. If you use Gmail, right, you can tab through your Gmails. It pretty much knows what you want to type before you're typing it. And I think it's really important that we are very responsible with how and where and uh, how that that type of technology is implemented uh, mm -hmm. for good. Uh, so I think when it comes to responsible artificial intelligence or responsible AI, 
I think we're going to continue to see increased regulation around that. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what AWS is, is doing around that again, just to make sure that it's being used for good. And, and um, you know, some of the bad actors out there don't uh, aren't implementing it in ways that it can put it, be a detriment to, to society and the economy. And then I think, you know, it's top of mind for all of us is sustainability. Uh, so you've probably seen what AWS is doing uh, specifically with the climate pledge, uh, our commitment to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2040, uh, which is about 10 years ahead of the Paris Agreement. That is, uh, the, it's key for all of us uh, and, and our, 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 our young ones most importantly. So the more that we can be talking to our customers again about doing more with less, right? It's a, it's a consistent theme. And I'm really proud, I think, in so many ways that not only that we have the Climate Pledge, but what we're doing to help our customers solution around uh, sustainability and and um, what we're doing from our you know our data center's perspective and the goals that we have set forth for our company as a way to kind of set an example for others. Right. That's a, those are great examples to set for others. Susanna, take us out. What are some of the things that, that excite you about innovative ways we can use technology to positively impact future generations? I, I again, I think Trish and I might have prepped at the same time thinking about this, right? You know, I, I first, I, I thought, man, what, when we start thinking about using AI responsibly and what does that look like for our future generations, to be honest with you, Lisa, I think, I think the future is still unwritten. I think that, I think that we're going to see massive changes in the way that we do business. I think that we will see change it. I think we'll see different new companies emerging, new technologies emerging that go with it. And I, Oh, and I, I'm like, what would what would my three year old son going to be doing when he's graduating college? I, I'm like, I don't actually think I know that, and I don't actually think I can set the stage exactly what he's what that looks like. What I do know is that the technology that we have today is definitely going to be transforming what you know, 18 years time looks like when he's graduating college and whatnot. So, I I think it's. It's embedded in our lives more than ever. It will continue to. I'm very curious to see how that goes. I'm happy that we're in the industry that we are in, right? Part of innovation and helping customers innovate more, think out of the box. I think we're in the right place for it. I'm excited to see what that looks like in the future. Excellent, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me on this great program, AWS Women of the Cloud. Not only are you uh, women of the cloud, your mothers, your leaders, your change makers, we so appreciate you taking the time to really explain to us some of the great impacts that you're making, what excites you, how you've grown as a leader. I, I know we could keep talking, but I just want to thank you so much for sharing what you did today. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Lisa. Honored to be oh, here. Such a pleasure. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. 